Peter Haddock and I'm here at the Perkins Europe Research Development Center in Peterborough with Ryan Connor. Ryan, you are an engineering manager here and this is the start, folks, of a really exciting series I'm doing with Perkins Engines where I'm actually going to be discovering how an engine's made, tested and all the things that go into it. And this is why we're here, Ryan, isn't it? Because this is where all of that magic starts, isn't it? Absolutely, it starts here, one of our key value streams where we rig, um, build, uh, ready for test all of our engines. As you see here, our 1204 uh, turbocharged product, tier four fi final, um, ready for, for um, de-rigging. So this engine has just been on test. So the testing process is what we're going to discover here. And this is part of saying about an engine, the loads that are on it, how the engine works and performs, isn't it? Tell me a bit about the things that we're going to see in the testing arena that this engine's just gone through. Uh, absolutely. So we will get to see inside a test cell where we do performance and emissions development. We'll get to see in the test cell where we do uh, different validation activities, cold climates, NVH noise and vibration testing, um, but all start in a rigging situation like this where we connect all the pressures and temperatures on the engine so that we can capture all the, the valuable data that we need through the development process. And one of the things I've been interested in, that is why I'm doing this journey with Perkins, is stage five engines. And that journey is already out there. And we've been working with machines now and manufacturers to push out the stage five engine. Tell me a little bit about the stage five engine and why it's different and why it's important. Absolutely, so stage five is a critical regulation that we need to, to meet. Um, we harness our, our robust um, development processes for developing the engine's performance and emissions, but then also harness the after treatment systems, similar to what you see on top of this engine here. And we run it through our, our complete development process. Um, as well as investing in the product development, we have to invest in the facility development so that we can measure all the um, NOx speciations, all the particulate mass, all the particulate numbers with all the exhaust gases that come out of the engine as well. So as well as investing in the product, we have to invest in the facility too. Now products like engines like this are made of metals and different components, but it's the technology that goes into this as well. We see sensors and probes all over the place here in the testing unit. What are we absolutely able to measure when this rig is all set up and all of these different measurement devices here? We measure just about everything we can on the engine from the, the oil pressures and temperatures, but then also we, we measure the uh, ECM temperatures. So that's the engine's computer. We right. match all the sensors that are on the ECM with what's on the test bed, so actual real world measurements as well. And we correlate the two, um, as well as in the test cell, measuring all the, the emissions equipment measurements from the exhaust gases at the same time. So lots, hundreds and hundreds of measurements to, to, uh, to capture. And what this is all about is it's about saying, how do we optimize an engine for different types of application? So this engine's gonna go into lots of different OEM manufactured pieces of equipment. And therefore those pieces of equipment have got different tasks to perform. It might be an excavator, it might be a dumper, it might be a larger drill rig for some of the other engines that you put together. So optimization is really important, but it's all about therefore understanding about those loads and how we can optimize this for different OEMs as well, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. So we, we capture all the data, all the def different pressures, temperatures, flows, um, but then actually we replicate the machine cycles in the test cell as well. So we've got a lab environment matching what the machine's actually running in, out in the field. Um, when it's in a controlled environment, we can then optimize, as you say, whilst measuring the performance and the emissions as well. One of the things that's gonna be a highlight of my tour, folks, and I've brought some extra clothing, is I'm gonna to get to go inside the cold chamber. Now, Ryan, how cold is it gonna be for me when I get inside that chamber? Yeah, we, we've set this up for minus 40 degrees Celsius. Right. Um, one of our, our key nodes that we test at is minus 32. But just for you, we, we've reduced it to minus 40 to show the capability of our, our facility. I don't know about minus 40, folks. Might have to actually notch that up a bit. That sounds really, really cold. But also, one of the things that I'm really excited about is sound. So noisy engines, we've all heard the noisy engine drowning out conversations like this. Uh, on site, a noisy engine also interferes with communication between people working on a site. But we've got a noise chamber. Well, I'm, I'm wondering what that's all about, Ryan. What is that for? Yeah, absolutely. So really listening into our end customers in the cab environment is key that that is comfortable. Um, so we do test rigorously the, the validation of our, our cold 
um, decibels from, from the engine. So we have a noise chamber where we can test and run specific tests to make sure that we're, we're reducing the noise effectively on the engine. So it's a lot going on in my tour of the Perkins engines. There's going to have to be a lot of episodes in this, folks. But the other things I'm interested in as well is we talk about stage five, we talk about reduced emissions and things like that. So fundamentally, I want to see those reduced emissions, folks, to see that we're actually making a difference. But also, I want to go and discover some of the other things that I can do by turning the nodes up, turning the actual things up on the engine, so actually I can put some loads on the engine to see how that impacts its performance. And finally, Ryan, it's not just about the, the Europe Centre here, is it? This is right next to a rather large other building over there. There we make the engine. So the process when you've tested it, when you've got these new engines, when they're actually ticking all the boxes, we've done all the optimization. we have to make them then, don't we? But there's a special line, folks. A zero line, did you say it before? Track zero. Yep. Track zero. What's that all about? Yeah, absolutely. So we can run our uh, prototype um, uh, product down that line to make sure that we've got the manufacturing processes in place before then we open up the line fully and, and get fully into production. Um, really joined up so that we can work from development into production seamlessly. Yep. And that's all next door, folks. And I'll go and discover that for you myself when we go and see the engines in manufacturing. But for now, we've got to go and see what the cold chamber's like, what the noise chamber's like, what particulates there are, how we can rev up these engines and load them with lots and lots of different elements to the excavators. Better get a move on, haven't we, Ryan? Yep. Come on, Bonus, let's go.